Welcome to Feeding Pets. In this lesson I'm learning to find fractions between two other fractions. Let's imagine I want to have uh, some of a chocolate bar. If I have one quarter of that chocolate bar, I find it's just not enough chocolate and I need more. But if I have half a bar of chocolate, that's way too much chocolate and I feel really ill. I want to find an amount of chocolate that I can have. Now over here you can see I've got some amounts of chocolate. Up here, this is what one whole chocolate bar looks like. Here is what half a chocolate bar looks like. And here is what one quarter of a chocolate bar. So remember a quarter, so up to here, is not enough. But at this point, I'm having too much chocolate. So I'm trying to find an amount which is somewhere between these two. Well, one way I could answer this question is by changing both of these into decimals. I know that one quarter is the same as 0 0.25, and I know that one half is the same as 0 0.5. Let's just put both of these numbers on a number line. So on my number line, 0 0.5 is going to fit in the middle, in between, halfway between 0 and 1, so about here, and 0 0.25 will sit about there. And if I'm thinking about fractions, 0 0.5 is a half, and 0 0.25 is a quarter. So now I could choose any amount between 0 0.25 and 0 0.5. I could cho choose 0 0.26 or 0 0.49, but I'm going to choose 0 0.4 because it's easy for me to change 0 0.4 into a fraction. I know that 0 0.4 is the same as 4 tenths or two-fifths. So that's the amount of chocolate I'm going to choose today. Remember though that there could have been lots of other choices as long as they fell between 0 0.25 and 0 0.5. Let's try another question. Uh, let's imagine I'm thinking about my friend who's got a similar problem. If he has one-ninth of a bar of chocolate, it's just not enough for him, but if he has two-thirds, it's far too much, and he becomes very sick. I want to work out what amount of chocolate could he eat. Well, over here you can see I've got some bars of chocolate. This bar here represents one whole bar of chocolate. This part here represents one-ninth of a bar, and this part here represents two-thirds of a bar. Well, last time we tried to solve uh, these questions by turning them into decimals. This time I'm going to leave them as fractions. So I'm going to keep one ninth as a ninth, but this time I'm going to change two thirds into an equivalent fraction, which is in ninths. So I'll write this here again. Now we know from earlier lessons how I can change two thirds into ninths. To change this denominator from thirds into ninths, I had to times it by three. So I need to do the same to the numerator. 2 times 3 is 6. So I know 2 thirds is exactly the same as 6 ninths, which means that my friend can eat an amount of chocolate which is between 1 ninth and 6 ninths. So any fraction between these two numbers is an amount of chocolate that my friend could eat. So I'm going to choose hmm, 4 ninths for this one. And we could double check that by coming up to our picture up here. I can split these thirds into ninths by drawing lines through here. And you can see that, that this would be one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, and six ninths. So all of these amounts here are between one ninth and two thirds. Just be a little bit careful though because we know that six ninths is the same as two thirds so you couldn't choose that one. Now let's try a question without any pictures. Uh, I want to find a fraction which is between two fifths and eight twenty fifths. 
Now so far we've solved these types of questions by changing them into decimals and also finding an equivalent fraction. So let's start with this one by using that equivalent fraction system again. I'm going to leave 8 25ths as it is and I'm going to change 2 fifths so that it is also in 20 fifths. Let's do that over here. So I need to change my denominator so it's not in fifths, it's up in 20 fifths. Well to do that I'm going to have to make my denominator, or I have made my denominator, five times bigger. So I'll have to make my numerator five times bigger as well. Two times five is ten. So I know ten twenty-fifths is the same as two fifths, so I'm going to use that. Ten twenty-fifths. So I could choose any fraction between these two amounts, and an obvious choice is going to be nine twenty-fifths. Now I could also solve this question by changing it into decimals, but in this example it's probably going to be a little bit harder. But let's have a go. So we've got two fifths and eight twenty-fifths. Well, if I change two fifths into tenths, that's going to be easier for me to change into a decimal. So two fifths becomes four tenths, and I'm sure we're all good at changing two fifths into, into tenths. Now I know that four tenths is zero point four. So now all I've got to do is change the eight twenty-fifths into a decimal. Well, I could do it in one step, but just to make it nice and easy, I'm just going to do it in a couple. I'm going to change 8 25ths into 16 50ths. I did that by making the numerator and the denominator twice as big. And I'm going to do that one more time, so that I've got 32 hundredths. And I did that by making this denominator two times bigger, and that numerator two times bigger. And I did that because 32 hundredths is easy for me to change into a decimal. It is 0 0.32. So that means another answer to my question would be any decimal between these two. I could have 0 0.33, 0 0.34, 0 0.35, etc. We could actually do a double check and see that our 9 25ths sits inside here. I'll change my 9 25ths into a decimal. I'm going to move them into hundredths to make it easy to do. And to do that I made my denominator four times bigger, so I have to make my numerator four times bigger. So 9 25ths is equivalent to 36 hundredths, which we know is 0 0.5. 3, 6, and yes, that fits between 0 0.32 and 0 0.4, so it was a good answer. Well, I hope you've found this lesson helpful. For more help, check out teachertools.co.nz.